Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Music Den. My name is Armando Venditti, and I will be your host for this channel slash episodes, in plural. <laughs> for this episode, we are going to be taking a look at another uh, music documentary review. And this one is on David Bowie. Uh, it came out November November 18th, 2022. And it is called Moon Age Daydream, which is one of David Bowie's songs from the album Ziggy Stardust, Rise and Fall, Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars from 1972, released on RCA Records. I'm going to show you the DV, uh, the Blu-ray cover. To... There we go. Uh, I realize that when I talk with the product in front of my face, my voice comes a bit muffled out over the, the microphone. So I apologize for that. I'm learning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really learning here. I'm a babe in the woods. Um, again, this documentary came out November 18th, 2022. It was released to the theaters, and then it was released on Blu-ray and DVD and uh, I believe 4K. Don't quote me on that, but I believe on 4K about a month later. Um, around Christmas of 2022. This documentary chronicles the life of the one and only, the incomparable David Bowie. And if you're a fan of David Bowie, you are in for a treat. I kid you not. This documentary clocks in at a mammoth two hours and 20 minutes. It was directed by Brett Morgan, and in an interview, sorry, I'll be looking up, and in an interview with Mr. Morgan that was done on the on the BBC uh, News Morning Show, he had stated that this documentary was done with the expressed permission of David Bowie. They had met to talk about the, the idea of doing a movie, a documentary, sorry, uh, just prior to his death. This production was done in conjunction with BMG and with HBO. So this was a mammoth undertaking. Again, um, what to say about this movie is that it is fantastic. Fantastic. From the word go, from the first opening sequence, you are, I was, I'm speaking from my own personal experience. I was drawn into this like you would not believe from from the very beginning. The the one thing about this documentary, guys, is that it does not, I guess the word linear comes to mind. It's not linear. Like it doesn't go from A to B to C to D to E. It goes from, it starts basically in the middle. It, it doesn't go from one, two, three. It starts from say C to Z. Um, it goes from all over the place from uh, his start with as David Jones, it's and then going into Space Oddity, his success with Space Oddity, then uh, with Ziggy Stardust, um, you know, the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust and Spiders from Mars from 72. But then it jumps into 1995, goes back to 1977. Four to 1983, back to 72, it does not go in the straight line. It goes all, it jumps all over, all over the place. I cannot speak today. I've had one coffee and I cannot speak, so forgive me for that. And it's very much like his career. I mean, if you're a fan of Bowie, you know that he never did the same or tried not to do the same thing twice musically. He went from from okay starting folk then he uh, experimented with went into rock uh, with hunky dory and then he developed the character of ziggy stardust from 72 had massive success with that in the uk and in europe and started to gain mainstream success in north america and then he basically cut people off and uh, people within his band i should say and started doing his own thing, like just moved on from there. He made a complete cut with 
the members of who were in the um, Spiders from Mars band, uh, with the exception, I believe, of Mick Ronson, who stayed with him for, I believe, one more album after um, after Aladdin Sing. Uh, but basically, he went all over the map musically. He did whatever he wanted to do. And this documentary here covers that beautifully. Um, it, again, it, it, it leapfrogs from 95 to 72 to 80 to wherever. It, there's no rhyme or reason to how this was put together. And to, well, it, there was a reason to put it that way. That they wanted to visually show you what Bowie's mind was like musically, what he did musically. And in my very humble opinion, they succeeded. Uh, some of the reviews on the back of the Blu-ray uh, says, what does it say here? Hmm. A kaleidoscopic odyssey through David Bowie's brilliance. That's one of the reviews on the back. And yes, I would agree that that is a perfect way to describe what this documentary is like. Um, the, the, video, the interviews for the documentary were archival interviews that he had done over the years through 60s, 70s, 80s, throughout his whole career. Um, and the, they basically serve as the, the soundtrack, the, the, the backdrop for what you see visually. And uh, what, you, what you see visually, the only way for me to be able to tell you what it's like is to me it was mind blowing. They use the c techniques that they use. They use uh, color images mixed with black and white, but the use of color, the sharpness of the color that they use, the technique. It's almost like color is like a secondary character. It's like a live, living, breathing character in the film, in the documentary. And not just not just um, a tool. It, it basically, um, it is just an astounding, and and again, the, one of the reviews, if you can read here, says that the movie is astounding. So, don't take my word for it. It's here. Um, the forgive me, I'm going to put this down. The soundtrack. There was a soundtrack. A double disc soundtrack that was released for the movie. It was released simultaneously, and I have it right over here, ladies and gentlemen. I will show it to you. It comes again. It's a double disc, and it comes as a digi pack. Released through I ISO ISO Columbia and Parlophone. Uh, Parlophone distributed through Warner Music, and it was overseen and produced by Tony Visconti. Tony Visconti's work with people, groups like Thin Lizzy, uh, T-Rex, David Bowie. And what he did was he took what this soundtrack story consists of as unreleased live material and also st studio tracks that were remixed by Tony Visconti for this project. And it is... Again, it is beautifully done. It is beautifully done. There are scenes in the movie um, where you see Bowie in certain scenes, like certain settings, where he is either in a hotel in his hotel room lying on the bed watching TV, or he'll be walking through late at night. He'll be walking through a hotel lobby, maybe going into the walking by a bar, the hotel bar, and just sort of taking things in, just sort of looking around and, you know, just looking and just observing what is around him. What he liked to do is he liked to just observe people and learn from what he visually soaked in and took those experiences and put it into his music. Um, there's also a scene where he's lying, sitting, sorry, not lying, sitting 
in a uh, on a uh, patio at a hotel. This was around. I would imagine it would be around the uh, Let's Dance Serious Moonlight tour that he did in '83, where he's just sitting on the patio, just looking outside. It's a beautiful day outside. It's nice and sunny, and he's just again just taking it in what he's seeing and you can just imagine he's mentally storing in what he's taking what he's looking at and he's enjoying himself but he's also keeping keeping to himself he never he, i don't i'm not going to say he didn't engage with people in these in these videos in these scenes but he he pretty much just was an observer and it, to me, it showed a vulnerability about the person that I don't think has ever been to my memory, though I have a short memory, but to my memory that has ever been seen before, or read before. So, you know, there is that. If you're open to the fact, again, that the movie clocks in at two hours and 20 minutes, you know, like movies, it's very, it's very difficult for people to sit still for 15 minutes these days. So for someone to be able to sit in the movie theater for two hours and 20 minutes to watch this movie is to me mind blowing. It's just, it's just sad because people obviously today in this very sort of very quick processed society that we're living in, that we all want our information now, now, now. We need it done right now. Um, doing that would be a bit tedious for some people. But for me, this movie was fantastic. Um, and again, it, it, the only thing it doesn't cover is the uh, collaboration he did with Queen on Under Pressure. This is all his solo stuff. This had nothing to do with any collaborations he ever did that he ever did with any other artist. It is just him and his life and his views on society and himself and his music and what attracted him to music in the first place and the people that he wanted to collaborate with. So, I mean, in terms of production and recording. So, I mean, for, you know, for what, you know, for the time that you spend watching this, you do get your money's worth. So hopefully, you know, you will watch this video and you'll look it up. You can get it on on Amazon. Um, I got mine on Amazon. I paid like something like 30, $35 for it. Uh, but for the for the length of time that the video that the documentary runs for, it's well worth well worth your money. It's a lot of bang for your buck. Let's put it that way. So if you want to invest and take the time to, I'm not sure if it's streamed anymore. You'll have to look that up. Um, but, you know, you won't, you can't go wrong watching this and investing your money in this. If you're a Bowie fan, you know what I'm talking about with regards to his musical output. If you're new to Bowie, by all means, pick this up, watch it. Take the time to invest and learn about someone who, up until the day he passed in 2016, unfortunately, this man was still, to a large extent, an enigma. Nobody really knew what made him tick. And he wanted it that way. He enjoyed keeping people guessing. If he thought he was going to go right, he was going to go left. You know, if, and to me, the older I get, I like artists that take chances and with their music and their, their delivery of said product. So, I mean, he fit the bill for that. So, I mean, anyways, that's my rambling on. Anyway, so yeah, please check this out. Ch uh, check out the documentary and um, check out the the soundtrack that goes along with it. So, and um, yeah, I, I, again, 
you will not go wrong. You will not go wrong. I mean, you can even stream it on YouTube, uh, the soundtrack itself. You know, so I mean, there's, you know, a lot of people tend to stream their stuff before they buy it, and that's fine. So stream it, take a chance. You never know. Anyway, that's it for this video. And again, I appreciate your attention. Hopefully, I didn't ramble on too much. Um, but if you like what you see, please like and subscribe uh, to the channel. All of this helps out with uh, getting my channels viewed on YouTube. Anyways, if you're interested and you like what you see, please leave a comment, whatever you like, and uh, in the comment section. And hopefully I can continue to bring you these videos as much as I can. Anyways, that's it for now. Everyone have a good day. Be, be good to one another and uh, be safe.